Now time to round up today's top stories in the world of science and technology with CTV's science and tech expert Dan Riskin. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Yeah, so a rocket that I was so excited it was going to go to the moon today, and now we have to wait for another day. Yeah, do we have an idea of why? Like, what happened here? Well, there were a couple of delays. Uh, basically, the morning of the launch, they have to put all the fuel in it. They don't leave the fuel in there, you know, the night before because mm -hmm. it's extremely volatile. It has to be kept very, very cold. And so it's basically hydrogen in the bottom half, oxygen in the top half, and it's the mixing of those that creates the combustion. And uh, the, the filling of the tanks was delayed because there was a lightning storm in the area, and they like to play it safe when it comes to that stuff. But once they got it filled, um, a little bit of a leak uh, started to emerge and there was a whole lot of talk about whether this was a big leak or a small leak or a mm -hmm. bad leak or a, you know an okay leak and and ultimately uh, they decided that there was just enough uncertainty that they didn't feel comfortable the launch window today was only from 8 33 until 10 33 and uh, they had paused the launch clock at 40 minutes and ultimately they just said you know what we don't want to be rushed we don't want to make any mistakes here so we're going to push this to another day and get this all mm -hmm. sorted out so now they have to get all that fuel off of the ship and uh, prepare for another day and Dan, along with that, the next possible launch is slated for Friday. So, you know, we got to take a look at more subjects here, even though I love space and everything about it. But we're going to you know, switch it up a little bit, Dan, with bats. How do they live yeah. so long? Yeah, bats. So when you think of the longest lived animals, you don't think of bats because they look like mice. And we all know that mice only live for like five years or something like that. But bats <laughs> can live into their 40s, which is just this crazy thing for a mammal that small to do that makes them exceptional among mammals. And, and there's this new study that gives a hint as to how the best of the bats do it. The, the bats that can hibernate in the winter actually seem to be aging more slowly while they're in hibernation. It's almost like they're in a cryogenic chamber. And so when you take a bat and you let it go hibernate, uh, it drops its body temperature down to like five degrees Celsius. And that just gives it this boost so that it, it's not aging and it's just surviving mm -hmm. through the winter but only aging at about 25% the rate of a normal one. So that bat there is a big brown bat. That's the one that was in the study. Uh, it's a Canadian bat. In fact, the bats in this study were Canadian bats from Hamilton. Uh, and so it's just a, a nice window into what the secrets are to a long life for other mammals. And the hope is that we can make this into uh, technologies that will help uh, humans live longer too. Right, so what can we take away from this? How can we live longer as humans? <laughs> Well, it's, it's about understanding the cellular processes that, that break down the, the DNA or that, or that cause methylation, which is really like the aging and of, the, of the, the cells. And so if we can understand how bats can slow that down and the, the, what's going on inside their cells, then we can start to understand what chemicals and what parts of our own cells are causing the aging process to happen and ask whether some of those might be modified a little bit. Mm. Okay, and speaking of long life, Dan... Long marriages. What makes a marriage work, Dan? I'm listening, taking notes. Oh, yeah. So this is a study of, of trying to predict uh, what will make people happy in a marriage. And this is really neat because uh, it's, it's a very hard scientific question. I mean, you could um, just put people together from different back from the same background, like so same socioeconomic background. But that doesn't always work. Sometimes you get, you know, the rich person and the poor person that fall in love and it just works beautifully. Or you could do personality tests. But you know as well as I do that sometimes people with the same personality do really well together. And sometimes it's opposites that attract when it comes to personality. So this latest study looks at whether being in sync, whether your brain waves might predict if you're going to make it as a couple. And so what they did is they took married people and they showed them a bunch of movies, not, not exciting, you know, Avenger movies, but like a boring movie of people making dinner together or other situations that would happen in a normal marriage. And as people watched them, they had their brain scanned. And what they found is when you look at couples that are doing well as a couple that are both satisfied in the relationship, they tend to have the same brain activity when they're watching the same movie as though they're experiencing it in very similar ways. It's, it's uh -huh. as though they have a very similar way of seeing the world. And so there's something there. I don't know how you use that when you're <laughs> online dating trying to find that match. What are you talking about? It sounds a like start. a perfect first date idea. <laughs> I mean, Dan, if, was if just... I was going on the first date, absolutely. I'd be like, what, brain scans? I am in. Let's do this. I think you might be the person for me. Dan, I was just going to say, what in the world? <laughs> 
you found your room and you're good. It wouldn't work for everybody. But I mean, sometimes it's 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 a scientific question, right? What is going to make a a relationship last or not last? Sometimes it's very practical why you want to know this, because maybe you're having trouble in your relationship or you're not and you just want to prevent it. And so understanding these things can be really important. But fundamentally, it's also like an interesting question about how humans choose their mates, how we, um, you know, like there's a very well-known phenomenon that you don't necessarily fall in love with somebody you grew up with because, you know, we have this whole built-in thing to avoid accidentally falling in love with a sibling. So somebody you've known since a very young age, that doesn't work. And so there are all these neat mechanisms in place to help you choose the right person. And it's just interesting that brainwaves come into come into play as well. Yeah, we didn't know you were going there. Yeah, CTV, <laughs> science and tech expert. I know it's early in the morning for incest, but you know, just a little bit. <laughs> Always great chatting with you, Dan. Thanks so Thanks much. Thanks, Dan. Chat again soon.